Hello, Battle Right fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Chad of Fury333, and doing some in houses now, and also my first 3v3s, come to think of it. But yeah, doing a bit of in house casting because that's a great way to find people who are really good at the game playing the game. And we have Vreezy with Jade, Sash with Rukan, and Batty with Lucy against Mighty Fine Goat playing Osmo, the new hero that's just come out today, Trinth as Paloma, and Taiga also as Rukan. And I'm going to be watching Vreezy real close because I want to see how they play Jade. Because I'm sure I've mentioned before, Jade is a favorite hero in the game. I kind of have a thing for heroes that are all about the guns. So, they're not just heroes, like any character games in general. I don't know why, but gun-based characters, they just appeal to me. Anyhow, let's get the battle started. Vreezy, ooh, okay, going for the disabling shot setup. And we have... Not really sure. Osmo's gonna be interesting, especially what rights they choose, but just in general. Osmo, I've been playing around with Osmo a bit. Very damage oriented, not really got all that much going on. I mean, it's just damage, basically. It's just use Chaos Bolt. Sorry, <laughs> Chaos Bolt, wrong here. Use Arcane Fire into Displace, into more Arcane Fire, into another Displace, into more Arcane Fire, into Arcane Barrier, into more Arcane Fire. It's just keep shooting. Which is actually kind of interesting, because a lot of people are arguing Jade does the same thing, but. Anyway, to the game. Poking going on here, and nice dodge out there from Breezy. A lot of cancel casting going on there. There's the final shot, and nothing stopping and no ward coming out. But, actually with that, the blue team getting the center orb. That's putting the blue team in a very nice advantage. Like that smoke, like the smoke veil right there coming out from Breezy to keep their team safe, keep their baddies safe, keep their Lucy safe. And now, we are going... Yes. Hmm. Not quite managing to get that. Probably missed time on the orb. A little surprising there if that was actually the case, but it could be, could very well be, and Petra Bolt coming in to buy a little bit of time, and a snipe to finish, well, snipe to set up for finishing off, well, finishing off the ultimate, but this doesn't quite work out, I'm afraid. However, that is still, yet another, that, I mean, I'm surprised Mighty Fine is not throwing out Arcane Barriers to stop, or Arcane Wards, rather, to get in the way of those snipes coming in there. But... Gearmore not doing much, that ultimate is probably not going to be all that useful in practice. Gotta be, I just... I've seen it used a few times. It's a good way of doing area denial. It doesn't seem to be actually doing a lot of damage in practice. And... At the, wow, Taiga getting completely torn away, but managed to get out of there. Managed to teleport out of there, thankfully for them. But still, blue team with solid control of the center, which is not going to go away anytime soon. Try and pull Bru Breezy out of there, but with... With Mighty Fine Slain. And Trinth following... Actually, either Taiga or Trinth following soon after the... There's Taiga. Sorry, there's Trinth, then Taiga. Not quite getting hit by the snipe, but still does get taken out. So first round does go to the blue team. Pretty much just had orb control start to finish. That's what it came down to. And also good crowd control. Got to see that smoke veil halfway through. Good play there. Though, really the petrified bolt. The petrified bolt trapping the entire red team, just allowing for all the setups. It didn't actually do a huge amount, but it was probably more demoralizing than anything. I mean, it helped set up a bit, allowed some damage. But Petrified Bolt does still... It is still damaging. Or sorry, it still requires damage to get through. You can't just go through Petrify... ...for free. But hey, some damage was dealt, some stun was dealt. It wasn't... I think it was more of a morale thing. So red teams really gotta make sure that they're separated. They can't be together together like that, otherwise they just get hit by Petrified Bolts. And nice consume stopping the snipe. Their snipe not properly cancelled. But... At this point, it's really a matter of making sure that the blue team doesn't get pulled out of the center. And nice pull in! Wow! Mighty Fine is just getting completely... They're trying to fight. I mean, at this point, red team is going for the center. They want that center. They want to hold it. But they're forced out once again as another Petrified Bolt pushing Trinth as the only person who's actually able to move and pushing them out of there in the process. Good Stone Glass to stop Breezy. But ultimately, once again, the blue team able to hold on to the center very strongly. And Grimmar being thrown out there. Last minute dodge from Batty. I'd like to see that. That was exactly what they needed to do, because they were pretty... Well, not quite gonna die, but they're not doing so well. Batty getting focused down very quickly. And at the same time, we have Sesh just being completely locked down. They're forced out of there. Get that... Get that bolt in there. Yeah, that was the hero I'm thinking of offhand. But yeah, that was... Well, the consume coming in just to save Taiga's life, but at this point, Taiga about to go down. There's... There's the shot to get it down with the ultimate, and at this point, Trinth once again... Well, Trinth and Taiga both once again in a spot where they're really out of position. I feel like Mighty Fine's just... Mighty Fine Goat. 
they're putting themselves out there, but not really managing to do it all that successfully. They're putting themselves out there, but they're getting hit. Like, I mean, the thing is, is that I've, I'm thinking Osmo's kind of one-dimensional, and part of that being that Osmo's kit is pretty much entirely built around firing off arcane fire. That's it. Fire off arcane fire, and then displace gives you charges, and arcane berry gives you charges, and arcane ward gives you charges, and all this stuff gives you charges, but it's really hard for... It seems to be really hard for Osmo to do much outside of that semi-melee range. Unlike Jade, there's not a whole lot of approach tools that don't also just give more damage, and Nice Arcane Barrier, in, well, forcing them out of there. I mean, Mighty Fine Goat had Nice Arcane Barrier, but they didn't have much to follow it up with, and now it's just Sesh completely wrecking them. Everyone completely wrecking them. Good Chrono Flux there, but unfortunately, only managed to pull back one shot, one, one Shadow Bolt out there, so that was kind of it. I don't know why I called it Chaos Bolt before. And Taiga getting hit by the snipe. Petrified Bolt turning it into a temporary 3v2 and forcing Mighty Fun Goat out of there. Mighty Fun Goat has so little health, trying to just fire in whatever they can. Like throwing the Arcane Fires from the edge, throwing in. Throwing in everything from the edge. That's all they have. The Chaos Grip from the edge, everything they have. And it's just not helping. Right? Breezy getting as close as possible without putting themselves in a risky position. But once again, Blue Team holding that center so strong that. Like, the red team is constantly approaching them to one side, which you can kind of understand because they want to make sure that they're together, but it also opens them up to Petrified Bolts, and at this point, with... with Sesh basically just wrecking face, Taiga almost dead. Taiga completely dead! And with that ultimate coming in, which actually doesn't do as much as I thought it would. Trent able to get a little bit of control, but at this point it's almost too late. 1v3 for older... 1v2 for older is hard enough. 1v3 for older is darn near impossible. I appreciate the effort. I applaud the effort. But I don't see that working out anytime soon. Not with Older's current kit. It's very difficult, especially at equal skill levels, to be able to deal with that at all. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that the red team, given what they have, isn't focusing on using a combination of Bunny Fine, Goat, and Taiga. Like, using Osmo and Rukan to just pull someone out of there, focus them down. Presumably, Batty would be the easiest target. I mean, lowest health, and of course, it's Lucy. Although, on the other hand, you have to deal with the fact that... Well, no, because they both have... They both have a directional shield, so you could pull them back, and then whenever they go for the Panic Bolt, which they probably will immediately, you just use the shield. You use either Consume or Arcane Barrier, just hold that up there, and then that works. That just does the trick. Anyway, it's another blue team control, and once again, Taiga forced the center, but Taiga seems to be trying to hold the center this time. Mighty Fun Goat still trying to stay on the outside. Well, actually, a bit of damage coming in there. That was good to see. But another snipe, yet another snipe coming in there. I mean, as much as Osmo may do what Jade does, and more, Jade's snipe, used properly, just so much better than Chaos Grip for getting around. Or at least it's better without any setup tools. At this point, Vreezy just showing, man, we're putting a clinic on how to play Jade here. Was there, was Arcane Bearer, that couldn't have been on, no, I don't think it was on cooldown. Yeah, I think Mighty Fun Goat's still getting used to how Osmo works. And that is very distracting, and Mighty Fine Goat forced out of the center as a result of just getting completely wrecked by the explosive shells. And at this point, Trinth heal, heal those guys up, but once again, no control of the center. And once again, down goes Mighty Fine Goat, always the first target. Always the first to go down. And down goes Taiga, and Trinth will soon follow once again. This has been a repeat three times over. I'm surprised they haven't gone from the, the red team hasn't gone from the bottom. Hasn't, I mean, splitting up from all sides is not the best idea, but I'm kind of surprised they haven't. Not a whole lot of pulse energy or shackle into... I mean, yeah, that's another thing they could do. Shackle into claw. I can see that working really well as a team as a team option there, but I don't... I don't know. I don't, there's not this energy there that Taiga and Mighty Fine Goat need. And Trinth... Throwing down a few Chrono Fluxes, which is good to see. That's what Older needs to do, but not much. And now we're seeing approaches from all sides. Red Team finally getting some control over the center. Actually getting quite a lot of control over the center, forcing Blue to split up and into the back. And Mighty Fine Go chasing down Sesh. Though Sesh getting out of there, getting back to the center. Miss with the Shackle. That, that's not a terrible thing, but it's less than ideal. And now with Trent out of position, being forced back in the Petrified Bolt. Once again, putting Mighty Fine Go as a 1v3 situation temporarily, but still there. And Taiga getting so much damage. 
Just needs to get behind the Chrono Flux. And there's pull. Oh, actually, no, never mind. Pulling Breezy, although Breezy could also go down quickly just to get that damage out of the way. And Orb going to the red team. So, red team finally getting some orb power here. And with Grimmar, not likely to do much, but still forcing blue team out of the center. That's That seems to be his purpose. Use 100 meter and get your opponents to move. Unless you shackle them first and have forced them to use all their cooldowns. It's probably going to be on par with Crippling Goo. I gotta be honest, I think in practice it will be. And that's mighty fun going about to go down. I mean, blue team's well, still losing that orb. I mean, red team's still taking the orb a lot more than blue team is. And at this point, though, Taiga going down. Mighty Fine Goat about to go down right afterwards. The Deadly Inject will finish it off. And Trinth. That's it. Blue team winning 5-0. In... That was... Hmm. That was interesting. I, I see a lot of potential for synergy between Osmo and Rakan there that was not taken advantage of. They really, Osmo's just new. So it is... It's the case that you just... You have a new hero, and you kind of got to figure out how to use them. It's tough. I get that. So it's one of those things that is going to be a learning experience. I'm sure that was the main problem that was being had there. Was Because one thing I didn't also... I kind of saw Osmo doing it, but not a whole... Sorry, uh, yeah. What was the guy's name, wasn't it? No, Mighty Fine Goat. I saw Mighty Fine Goat doing it. Yeah, Esmo is the name of the hero. I saw Mighty Fine Goat doing it. I didn't see... But not a whole lot of it was Arcane Fire Displace combos. A bit of it. But that should be dealing a 90 damage. I mean, if it's hitting with all 15 shots, that should be 90 damage right there. But I don't, I don't know. We'll see if Mighty Fine Goat decides to go for that again. I would like to see Esmo work well. I don't know how well that would work, though. I mean, one thing that I think would be cool for Esmo, it's been a design idea, but sort of thinking of, how would you do a Grimoire-based hero as a thing? And I'm thinking, have it so that you're, like, the, the M1 is just throwing out pages, not shots, just, like, throwing out pages in the ground, and maybe have... A limit of five again, just to have a variety there. And then you throw them down, and then other moves, either by intersecting the pages or just activating the pages as part of their move, do stuff. Like, his tomes are kind of works with that, but that's just one move for meter. I'm thinking, like, at the core of the character is throw out these setup pages for either that might say drop down and explode on their own, or drop down, and then if you're using the like a shield ability, it just creates a wall between pages, or creates a, an area between them that can't be can't be pushed through. Or if you use anything that's damage, it might have it like for. I think, I think the M two, I think Chaos Grip's fine the way it is. I think it's a good secondary direct damage. But then I have another move that's essentially maybe fire off damage from all of them, or you fire off and then it bounces between them or something, or creates a beam. So almost like walls and traps and st stuff like that. I don't know, it's a complete... There's an idea of... How would you make it not homogenous? Because there's been complaints about homogeneity that have come up since Esmo's dropped. I mean, might have been before, but really since Esmo's dropped. That... It just feels like Esmo has been kind of designed around take a bunch of parameters that already exist and throw them in a different combination than we had before. Instead of do something totally new. Like, add a completely new mechanic or much different mechanic into the game. And completely different t style of range, like one that's more better around, based around setup and keep away, or setup and mo movement control or position control. And Esmo's kind of got a position control setup, but the position control is not really as pronounced as it could be, I don't think. It, it could be a lot stronger. But anyway, at this point, we have basically the same teams as last time, but with Taiga going for a... Okay, going for Freya instead of Rukan, which is interesting. I'm curious if they main... I don't know if they made Freya. Let's find out. Let's see here. So, if they main Freya, then I imagine this will go a lot better. Furkan was more of a, a... a sub, or just someone they were experimenting with. Well, hmm. Taiga apparently actually really low win rate with Freya. Alright, so this is not their main at all. Let's see how this goes, then. Now, admittedly, this map does have fewer walls. It does make it easier to take the center than Skyring Day does. And already pulling in Batty. They're 
There we go, getting some pulls, getting some manipulation. Not a whole lot of it though, but still focusing down Batty very hard. And at this point, Batty getting... Okay. No, Ty getting pulled away from the focus. I mean, Batty being saved as much as they can be, with Chronoflux as well helping out. I shouldn't, well, the Chronoflux actually helping out the focus, come to think of it. But that is not really going to matter. And that Chronoflux not well positioned, sadly. Unfortunately, Breezy managed to get through that with a snipe, allowing for a lot of damage. And Master and Mighty Fine Goat being forced out of there once again. And... Well, there goes Ty. Fortunately, not able to do much. Sesh grabbing the orb and the grimoire doing managed to do quite a bit of damage actually which more or less evens things out but at this point it's not gonna matter Trinth once again in a 1v3 situation and forced to as best as possible hold but not able to do that nice smoke fail too they really fo forced Trinth to focus on Sesh who was way out of range or at least out of a convenient range a lot easier for Sesh to dodge that so there was no easy way for anything to go Trinth's way at the end of that game although that just keeps happening Trinth is not really their focus. They want to get rid of Taiga or Mighty Fine Goat first, and that's working really well. Although, because of the design of the map, this is a much easier map for getting the center control, keeping the orb, doing all that damage. Because that's what needs to be done. That is... That's kind of the core of the game, or a large... Not the core of the game, but it's a large part of it. So this one, Mighty Fine Goat focusing entirely on Chaos Grip, and Taiga? Oh, going for Charged Lightning. I wasn't really sure if Charged Lightning was a thing that was that important, but it got nerfed, so it must have been. Usually I see a lot of people go for the Thunderclap Shield. Anyway. Nice stop coming in there, and Mighty Fun Goat getting healed up as they try to stay out of range, but Force pulling Vreezy into a convenient range for Vreezy, and there's that... There's all uses of charges coming from Mighty Fun Goat. And another snipe hitting them again. They can't hit by those snipes. They never use the Arcane Barrier to deal with them. Like, I would think if they use Arcane Barrier, that would help them a lot, but they... I think they're focusing very much on just getting their main damage going. And s okay, there's a bit of Arcane Barrier. That's kind of helpful. Yet again, another Snipe. Actually, there's a good countering against the Snipe there. But still, that is not really ideal. However, that is ideal. Pulling Batty in. Nice Chaos Group to get that, get that pull. But Batty once again managed to get out of there, which that's always the tough part after the pull is to keep them there. I mean, it's good, good justification to use Shackle, for instance, but that's not being either. I... Mighty Fun Goat very much focused on just the Arcane Fire, basically. Arcane Fire and Chaos Grip, that's pretty much all they're doing. And now at this point, we have Sesh probably going to grab the orb right away. Down goes Trinth, Tiger on their own, although Freya's a bit better off at getting rid of a team than older, but not by much, especially not a full health team. This is basically just up to round three. Yeah, at this point, it's just... I feel like a lot of it is the fact that not a lot of the kit's being used, and I think a lot of the kit is not being used because it's... I mean, Shackle's really hard to use. Against players who know what they're doing, Shackle's very difficult to use for... for Esmo. Like, it's... it takes... second... well, it takes a second, but one second feels like forever in this game. I mean, one second is more than enough time to use an escape ability right as it's about to come out. I mean, you could bait, I suppose. That's about all you could really do. But it's very difficult for that to actually do anything, so in terms of keeping the opponents in place, not really going to happen. And once again, more? Okay, well, there's more of that shots coming in there. The Arcane Fire into Displace. But once again getting consumed, and at, actually at this point, Batty once again forced forced out of position, forced to pretty low health, and ah, that Chaos Grip forced to miss. I mean, probably should have just been cancelled at that point to avoid the consume, because that consume was really nicely timed. I don't think it would have been possible to Chaos Grip around it with charging, and ba Mighty Fun Goat needs to get out of range. Once again, forced to a pretty decent position, and with the root on the other two... Hey, there's a... That was a proper Arcane Barrier. That was when it was needed to be timed. Perfectly timed there. But unfortunately, Sesh is the one out there, and Sesh is doing a great job of keeping themselves alive while just wrecking Mighty Fun Goat. And that's... Okay, that displace was absolutely necessary. Only getting hit a couple times by the ultimate. Once again, they had Arcane Barrier off cooldown. Or they did, didn't they? Okay, these cooldowns are not obviously accurate. They can't be accurate. Because they are not showing me what's going on here. Well, Mighty Fun Goat haven't been completely wiped out of this match. That's... That's done. Oh, perfect! Smoke fail to get through the stun there. Or get through the time travel stun. I mean, Vreezy on point there with the... With the assists. That's... That is one big thing Jade has. Like... Is that control. We aren't seeing a huge amount of disabling shots, but we are seeing a lot of smoke fails. 
I love that. So, at this point, red team stuck in a bit of a tough situation. Oh. Mighty Fine Goat might be trying to go for Shackle now, taking the battle right to make increased damage. I think they actually might have just taken that because at round four, Esmo, their battle right choices are okay. For if you're going for a Chaos Bolt style or Chaos Grip style, there's nothing for you. Shackle's probably the closest thing to something for you. And missing the Chaos Grip again, unfortunately. And another smoke veil putting putting Tiger in a terrible position. Tiger's almost dead at this point, already a few seconds into the match. And Taiga getting focused down hard. And with that, there's... Entire... Okay, that good counter. Get out of the way. But at this point, there's not much that can be done. Taiga just needs to get out of the way. Chrono Flux will at least hold stuff in place, but... Sesh... Well, interesting setup with the Chrono Flux. Didn't quite manage to work out. But at this point, blue team still not really taking any threatening damage. Mighty Fine Go about to get destroyed. Taiga shock bolting in to do whatever they can, but unfortunately doesn't do much. Proper counter, but that's still going to be death, thanks to the snipe finishing them off. And with time travel not quite hitting, bad, bad, it's just not working out at all here. And the crippling goo to finish off Mighty Fun Goat, and Trinth is going to go down once again shortly after. That junk shot was not even necessary. Just, just for show. Vreezy just pulling it out, because why not? I think at that point, the revolver shot would have done the trick. Red team. There's gotta be something missing here, and I didn't see any use of Shackle, like, Mighty Fine Goat, not even as the mind game question. It must have, it really was just because there was not much else. It was an okay right that might come in handy, but there's not much else. So I can understand how that happened. But this could be the last match once again. See how this goes, Mighty Fine Goat is... Pretty much, well, I would say Taigo is actually doing kind of poorly there. Oh, there we go. There's the counter they need. Stopping the snipe from doing anything. Freezy finally not having the snipe finish. But good Shadow Ball coming in to stop Taiga. And Taiga, once again, with a very well-timed counter. That was perfectly done. And the Chaos Grip pulling Batty in. There we go. Batty's getting out of the position. And while the Orb does go to the blue team. And the Smoke Bell comes in. That's stopping it. But still, Batty's getting focused down hard. And a lot of misses coming from Mighty Fine Goat, not managing to hit most of the stuff they're trying to throw on Batty, and being forced out of the way again. But Taiga, while they're putting out some pro some really well-timed counters, very on point, it's just not working out in terms of overall the overall damage to health. Although with the red team taking the orb that could even things out, it's going to be tough with Grimar coming in, actually managing to deal some damage. Seth taking a bit of damage, about 50 or so damage, which percentage of life, about a third of their total life. Blue team once again ahead, but not as ahead as they have been so far. One more orb for the red team, and it could even things out. And this is the moment of truth with Batty out of position. Oh! And Shadow Bolt taken it for the blue team. Taiga forced to just completely avoid combat for until they can get any kind of healing going on there. And surprisingly, we don't see Trent actually healing up at all. Trent healing themselves up, but Taiga not... Okay, there we go. Taiga getting a bit of healing. And once again, those counters have been saving Taiga this entire game. That has been their entire game plan. And it's Smoke Veil has been saving Freezy this entire game with a Crippling Goo to finish off Taiga. And nothing really damaging Freezy all that much. And wow, brilliant Snipe Claw combo there. Great timing too. I've got to be honest though, that that bit with the Snipe and the Claw, that could have gone much differently. Had Sesh been a bit more, a bit quicker on the trigger, but that was a good discipline there. Not sure if they were talking to coordinate that, but that worked really well. Like, seriously, half a second earlier and it would have pulled... The claw would have gone in the way of the snipe, and Freezy might have been able to re-aim, but it would have been a lot harder to set that up compared to just where it was right there. Great combo to finish it off, but really, there's just not a whole lot being used for, like... This might be what people are talking about with Esmo's kit. I haven't seen the in-between of learning Esmo at first to playing Esmo at high level and seeing how that develops. So granted, Esmo's only been out for a few hours, so it's not really easy to say how this is supposed to go. But it is definitely going to be tricky because that's, I mean, what are you supposed to do at this point? 